Hi everyone, my name is Min Trin. Payne Rosaski. Uh, we have Matt Ranelli and John DeVito, but unfortunately they cannot join us today. And our pro, uh, advisor is Professor Reiner. Um, this is our senior project. Uh, the device is called Lifeline Climbing Gear. And here we have two full sample cap model version. The left version is our initial uh, design. And after the building process and making several changes, then uh, we have the final version on the right side. Um, so today we'll talk about uh, some general aspect of the device, like goals, background, the concept to prototype, some calculation, some more specifics on schedule, requirements, and specification, uh, budget, and we'll focus on the building process, uh, simulation, analysis, testing, and results. Uh, our goal is very straightforward. We want to create a device uh, fully mechanical that is uh, lightweight, easy to assemble, and effective uh, in preventing linemen from falling off a utility pole. Some recap of our background for this project. Uh, most of the utility poles in the U.S. are made of wood with diameter around of, um, 11 inches and 30 feet in height. And in places that are not suitable for bucket trucks, like alleyways, then uh, linemen still have to climb up uh, for their maintenance works. As you can see here, the pole strap, which is wrapped around the waist of the linemen, is, cannot hold them that well when they lose the control with climbing spikes. And in case of falls, then there's not really any supported device that can help them to stay on the pole. So our device is a portable uh, claw-based application which uh, can help to attach a rope uh, to a utility pole. Um, the rope will be connected to the lineman's harness which will hold him back to the pole when he starts to fall. And the locking mechanism we have included a shackle and a latch system. We have saved uh, most of our initial uh, design from last semester. Using an extension pole, we bring up the device to a desired height and then use uh, cable one on the left side to lock the system. Uh, this secure the shackle and the latch together. And uh, once the linemen start to climb up, then the tension on rope two will activate the locking system, making uh, the latch and the shackle digging into the pole. It's also, uh, we can uh, just detect the shackle and the latch out of the cloth when the setup is done. And uh, cable four on the right side is used to open the latch and release the whole system when the job is done. Uh, from Since last semester, we have made some changes, uh, like using a Velcro strip instead of elastic band to hold the latch and the shackle stay better on the cloth. It's also easy enough uh, for us to detect both of them uh, when we're done with the setup. And we also added a hinge in the middle of the movable cloth, um, which make it easier for us to uh, close the system. For calculation, um, according to OSHA 1926.501B1, then there's a regulation that requires the employee who works six feet or above a lower level, they must have uh, some form uh, of safety system to prevent them from falling. So we're using that seat feet, uh, which is 72 inches, as the falling height in our calculation. Uh, we got one inches in static displacement by doing a uh, small experiment uh, using our rope. And from there, we get the impact factor of 13.04 uh, and the impact force of 3,260 pounds. This is the force that um, the device had to withstand to um, prevent a 250-pound lineman from falling a height of uh, six feet. Now, going to requirements and specifications, we have a lot of things to think about when designing our projects. A lot of things go into repairing telephone poles, but we want to make sure that we keep things easy for linemen and safe. Uh, first and foremost, obviously, the safety. We need our system to support a 250-pound worker and all his equipment is geared to at least a safety factor of two. We want to make sure if anything happens, nothing is going to give. And if a worker were to fall, they will not fall past our system, nothing will break. Um, we also want to make sure that it is resistant to any weather. There's a lot of things going on when people are fixing holes. A lot of rain, thunderstorms. We want to prevent any breaking in that instance. On top of that, we also want to make things easy. 
easy for the workers. We want to make sure you know, the assembly of the equipment is quick, easy, transportable, and easily storable in the truck. We also want to make sure that our device goes at least 30 feet high and can encompass an 11 inch pole, because that is the standard what we want those long dry poles are going to be. Now, on some more specific requirements and specifications for certain parts of our system, we have the locking system and the claw system. So, with the locking system, it is the shackle latch. It needs to be easily connected with zero chance of disconnecting. This is going to be the main part that holds the weight of everything. If this comes apart, that would be disastrous. We need to make sure that latch is closed easily and stays that way. It does not come off unless we want to. There needs to be a visual indicator that it's locked. We can't have people 30 feet down from the pole guessing, making sure it's locked. We need to make sure they know that it's in locked position and it's going to stay there. The connection can also not interfere with the integrity of the rope. We don't want the, the rope ruining from our system at all. Now, onto the claw system, it has to be lightweight and maneuverable from the ground. Because they're going to be lifting a pole off 30 feet, we want to make sure that it is light enough to move around and they can easily control it to make sure they accurately get the call where they need to be. The call system also has to be opened and released from the ground to secure the logic system. People can't get yeah, someone to climb the tree to secure it because our system messed up. We need to make sure they can do everything from the ground to ensure more safety for a lot of What you see in front of you is a WBS. Many of you may know it as a work breakdown structure. It's essentially the steps that we took to make the project that you see here today. The main sections are project management, design, and testing, and we use to guide ourselves along the way. Here is the schedule for the entire project. As you can see, we started back in February with our specifications, requirements, and budget. We went through the entire semester there by working on the design, uh, the guiding quality comments to do with the rope and the pole. We took short days in summer and back in September we started back up, ordering parts and started our prototype and testing. We did all that up until just a few days ago we finished up testing and brought it to you what we had today. This is a breakdown of the total budget of the entire project. As you can see, the majority of the cost came from the rope and the shaft and totaling about $175. Now, the total altogether is $274 which is well under our $500 budget. As stated before, safety is a very important factor in our project, and we want to make sure that we look towards organizations that help set standards with these kinds of things. Now, starting with the NSP code of ethics is something that, as engineers, we should all follow. And the very first point that is to hold ourselves paramount, paramount the safety, health, and welfare of the public, make sure everyone's safe, make sure we're putting safety first of all. We should also conduct ourselves honorably, responsibly, ethically, and lawfully so as to enhance the honor, reputation, and useless of the profession. We want to make sure engineering is safe. Engineers will always look good. We don't want to make ourselves look bad. We want to do a good job to keep that reputation uplifted. On to OSHA. OSHA, obviously, as many of you know, regulates construction and those kind of things. Obviously, a very good place to look when looking at um, linemen. Uh, code 1919.778, workloads will not exceed manufacturer's ratings. Now, we come to this count, but the rope and the shackle, they are rated. We didn't want to exceed that when we were taking into consideration the load they're going to be under. Also, code 1926.20, safety and health regulations for construction. There's a lot more points under that, a lot more things in those codes that we adhere to, that we looked at while we were building this to make sure everything is up to code, everything will be safe and fine in the workplace. On to the first part of our assembly, we have our pole. The pole currently is made of one inch conduit. This is relatively light, it's not too heavy. It's also going to be rigid, it's going to hold its shape. It's durable, it's not going to break. These are important factors that we want to keep in mind when making this. Guys, be light enough to lift up in the air, but also not move and not break after a certain amount of uses. So the second most important part of this entire system is the rope itself. The rope we selected was one and a half inch safety high V16 strand, horrible name I know. Its stated tensile strength is 7,000 pounds, which is above the 3,260, which is more than double the 3,260 pound force we are expecting, which gives us our safety factor of two. So <clears throat> the claw has changed a lot during our development. 
it went from multiple segments to one pipe that was bent into a uniform diameter and we had to cut into two separate pieces. This gave us some more adjustability and allowed us to make it line up a lot easier than trying to connect random pieces. It is made out of three quarter inch conduit and no major force will be applied to the cloth. The hinge we use has an hour diameter of 0.98 inches and is made out of stainless steel and was bought off of Amazon. The wire cable is 1 16th in diameter and is made of 304 stainless steel, also bought off of Amazon. The shackle is made out of galvanized alloy steel with a stated capacity of 6,600 pounds. Again, this gives us our rated safety factor of two to stand up to the high force of impact if someone were to drop the whole six feet. Here is a 3D printed version of our latch system. I have it up here. If anybody wants to see it, you can come see it. And this was just for fit testing. In the beginning, there was no weight testing done with this. Here is the final, here is the final version of the latch that was made out of uh, 1035 steel. This was made by Mitch down in manufacturing and it was held with a alloy steel pin in the center to allow it to rotate around with very little force. Uh, to, secure the, to secure the system onto the, cr the claw, we used Velcro. You could see it on the back of the, sha the yellow shackle there. This is so we can lift it up to the height we need and then get it off off of the claw without having to do some overcomplicated system. To make sure the system stays in constant tension, we have a ratchet that when you get it up to the correct height, you tighten this down and we'll keep the system. No matter if you fall or anything, we'll constantly keep it in tension so you're not, it won't just let off the tree randomly. Here's the simulation that I have done for for the shackle off of that 3,260 uh, pound number. And if this were to experience a force where it started to bend or go toward, where it started to bend, it would bend downwards. So it would be locked shut if it were to experience a force that were to bend it. It would never open up. Here's the overall parts list for the project. So our testing process, we put into multiple parts to test each individual component before putting them together as a system. So as you can see here, we started with the claw device and testing the opening and close, and this allowed us to calibrate where the latch and shackle needed to be mounted before we are lifting it up in the air. So this gave us a good idea of where everything needed to be before moving on to that next step. So we then, after we had everything calibrated, controls our single arm that closes and brings the two ends of the shackle and latch together. So as you can see here, we're able to not by holding the claw but with a wire and not you know, holding the claw, we're able to close the device and bring our latch and shackle together. So at this point, we're then ready to raise it into the air and uh, you know, this can just be continued as we reach our goal 30 feet, raising up and adding more segments of pipe. So we're able to get to our desired height. So before uh, raising anything up, we need to do some weight testing on our shackle and latch because that is the most important part of the entire system and all of the integrity of the climbers on that. So as you can see on the right, we started by attaching the latch and shackle and rope to a tree and just doing some ground level testing with the weight, roughly 200 pounds. And as you can see, we did put some bounces on it, which would give it, you know, the shock of what it's like when a lineman is climbing. Because it's not always perfect, they're going to be moving around, so it needs to be able to work with uh, different types of loads and movement. On the left, uh, we were able to get a larger load and test the strength of the latch and shackle. I was able to get a water tank and I was able to fill it up with 1,500 pounds of water and then use a forklift to lift it up and put that entire load onto our latch and shackle. And like the one on the right, I was able to move the boom up and down, which kind of gave the uh, simulation of a shock while I'm moving around. So that's far over our safety factor that we were aiming for, so the system is very strong and there's no chance of failure with the line and climb. So this is our third phase test 
section, which is the entire application of the system, is lifting our claw device up to its entire height and closing it and getting a strong connection. You can see we then ratchet the system down, which will put tension on it, which will ensure that it's locked into place. And then once this is done, the line is able to climb. Uh, we, haven't, we didn't get around to getting it up to our desired height, but with having it function at a lower height, the only thing stopping us from getting it uh, to move up is adding more extension to the pole. So having proof of concept showing that we're able to secure our latch and get it ratcheted down and be ready to climb at a low level can just be simulated the same way at a higher level. Uh, just some thank yous. Uh, we had a lot of help with this project. Like this thing, Nick Adams, for all of our help with uh, our machining and then our parts ready. Professor Reiner, uh, helping us the entire process the last year, uh, coming up with the idea and helping us manage all of the things we needed to be done. Dr. Bednarz, uh, you know, all the classes that we used for this and uh, just being there the whole time, you know, giving us direction with all those rate of experience. Dr. Moore with all our 3D printing and schematics that we used to come up with our design, as well as Dr. Ricci and Suzanne Stash. Here are the references we used for our presentation. Any questions? <laughs> is that a metal pole that you're using to raise it to the top? Yes, it is a metal. It's uh, it's a thin it's thin conduit. It's not heavy. It's fairly light. Uh, that is, that is true, and if this were to be a final, final design, the pole would be wrapped with a tape or some form of insulator to prevent that form of arcing to happen. That's typically 20K. Uh, David, The way our system is designed is you have to, at least in the beginning, place it on the tree, at least get it or on the pole, and you can at least use the claw as a guide to make sure it's not waving and if it's, you could lean it against the pole to give you some more forms of stability. So how, I mean, how high do you think one person can reach? Because for now we're using uh, that I mean, pole. For the, for the current commercial poles, can you reach the top? It will all depends on uh, how we using the extension pole, right? So if you how make it system. into um, like a actual pole that can extend the length, then I think well, it actually can, that. yeah, that's, that's which, which is that, that the test with a very short length right now, yeah. But overall, I'm, I'm actually quite surprised, pleasantly surprised by this project. So I think uh, compared to last semester, you guys made a lot of progress. So good job, okay? Thank you. How many hours you guys spend in overall in the machine shop? Um, I'm just answer. I don't remember. I'd say probably like. 500, 300, just roughly. I would say like five or, because most of the time, like five hours, because most of the time, if we were in the shop, Mitch was there and usually was able to help us really, really quickly. I would say many, many hours. Yeah, yeah, that's a fair one. Uh, Mitch did an amazing job. I'll go back to the actual. Mitch did an amazing job with this, better than I really could have hoped for, and it came out beautifully. Yes, yeah. this was a yeah quarter inch steel plate. <laughs> Good job. Okay. Any other questions?